Hi, Ruben here from TaskForce. Great to have you here. Uh, today we want to dive into how to create hyper uh, specific ads uh, based on your product feed. I think we can do it in 10 to 15 minutes. We try to keep it short because of every uh, everyone's time is precious. So uh, let's dive in directly. But first, I think it's uh, important to know why I set up these campaigns for my clients and why it is such a great um, addition to your current setup. Most advertisers who are selling products online are using, of course, uh, Google Shopping or Performance Max to showcase uh, their products. And most advertisers use search campaigns to um, showcase their products as well. Um, but often those search campaigns are only created on category level. So you reckon there's a big gap we can uh, fill in uh, with this new type uh, of campaign. Um, but in some cases, uh, people are using traditional DSA campaigns to uh, try to uh, advertise on product level. The traditional DSA campaigns have some uh, flaws because you don't have any control in what is displayed, uh, what is in the titles and which pages he can uh, crawl. Um, if we can uh, provide a, a own uh, DSA um, feed, it's always working better because of we can create hyper specific ads uh, with hyper specific keywords uh, we like to advertise on. So let's dive in how I try to do that. If we want to create hyper specific ads, I have here an example of a client of mine uh, who sells a refurbished laptops and we like to advertise on product level uh, again in the search uh, environment. And you can see the text ads are hyper specific and uh, the attributes uh, that are in the title in this case are uh, coming from their product feed uh, we use to um, yeah, advertising shopping as well. So in this case, you see the, the current title of the product in the he heading uh, number one. And in heading number two, we see the, uh, yeah, the current price. This is the, the current sale price we have provided in the, in the product feed. Next to the um, price, you can utilize all other attributes uh, you want, just like um, sizes, example for, for, for clothing or fashion or uh, brands or um, colors or yeah, anything you have in your feed, you can use to uh, fill in your uh, search ads in this case. So uh, let's see how I did it. I use uh, the software Chanable. It's not a sponsored video by Chanable, but I'm uh, a fan of the tool. So yeah, that's the go-to tool for me, uh, for Task Force as well. In each account, e-commerce account, we use this tool to uh, manipulate our feed and to provide feed to the different um, places we need a feed for. Those who are acquainted with uh, Chanable, um, you can set up a, a product feed from directly from your CMS or web shop. Uh, for all the um, well-known platforms, there are st standard API connections, but you can also um, utilize uh, XML. I asked Chanable if they can set up a, a demo account for uh, this tutorial. Um, they have uh, uploaded an XML file with uh, dummy data in it. So we have uh, some data to work with and we can uh, go step by step to uh, set up uh, the campaign. So basically under uh, the item tab, you can see the, all the attributes uh, from all uh, products. So if we open uh, just one product, uh, this is uh, a girl dress. In this case, this is the title of the product. This is the description of the product. And basically you can see all the um, attributes uh, the product feed has. It's a pretty basic feed, not that uh, enhanced, but I think we can work with it. And uh, if not, we can set up some rules to uh, enhance the feed as well. So in this case, we have uh, the product feed. And normally if you want to build a shopping campaign, uh, you build a feed under, uh, under the, the feed tab. Uh, or basically you can also uh, utilize the API functions to connect with uh, all the other um, marketplaces in this case. But today we are going to dive into the text text uh, function. I have uh, also set up a, a demo um, uh, connection as well. If you go to um, uh, add a dynamic text add generator, then you go uh, add a new connection. 
Now in this case, you can uh, give it a name and you want to connect with Google Ads. I have uh, set up a uh, Google Ads demo account as well. So this is the ID of the account and you can sign in with Google. Let's do it. You ha have to approve the connection within uh, your account uh, over here. So if you go to tools and settings and go to access managers, you can um, approve a channel for I already did it. So we can switch back to channel and um, yeah, get uh, the right account and give it a name. Uh, use a unique uh, per items ID and click on save. Now we are coming in the, the main rules and in the main rules, you can set up um, yeah, the, the basic rules. You don't want to have uh, um, products in your feed that are uh, less than, uh, in this case, 10 euros or 50 euros. So you can set up uh, basic rules. In this case, I copy rules from my example I made earlier. This is my standard filter. So in this case, I don't want to um, advertise on products um, which have less stock than two, um, or these are some basic standard filters to filter out products who hasn't a link or an image or a price uh, less than 10 euros. If the product doesn't meet the standards, then uh, the rule um, delete the product out of the feed. Over here, you can see how many uh, products are left uh, we have basically around 50% of the items left. If you want to add some other filters like a product filter, because of if you only want to advertise on certain brands or categories, you can uh, set up some uh, filters. Um, in this case, for this example, I only want to uh, build some campaigns for the girl dresses. And so the rule uh, filter out products who doesn't contain our girl dresses. We have only nine products left, but basically it doesn't matter um, how many products it has. It's because of the whole setup is automated. So that's the, the, the cool uh, thing about it. Then if you have set up the rules, you can go to campaign and basically fill in your campaign name. I used the same uh, naming convention you use in your current setup. I start with country code. And uh, in this case, is it dynamic search campaign by channel. Uh, you will uh, cr can create a uh, good one yourself. Of course, we only want to start with the search network only. Here you can set your daily budget. I think one euro is way too less. So let's start with, for example, uh, 50 euros a day. And I like to start with manual CPC, but some will start with maximize conversion value. I like to have some control. So I, in most cases, I try to start with manual CPC. If you have set this up, you can go to the targeting. You can also uh, get a dynamic uh, name from your feed as well. So if you want to uh, use, uh, for example, your category, you can uh, set a dynamic field. I like to have a static um, name. So if you go to targeting, uh, you uh, have the synchronization function over here. I like to have control in channel, so I like to override all targeting uh, on Google. The targeting setting, let's uh, set it on observation. Uh, if you uh, are precious on your budget, I use this one. And the others, the other ones are standard and you can exclude location. I basically start with all languages. Uh, you can also only use um english or the whole language is good because we don't set up a dsa campaign you don't have to fill in this um uh, setting so we can go to build the, the ad groups we can create a dynamic ad group in this case i like to call it uh, channel we go to the responsive search ads you can uh, set up some rules here as well uh, this is on ad group level uh, the other rules were on um uh, campaign level so basically here you can set up rules modify your uh, title so if your uh, title your your at, uh, attribute title is too long you can uh, set up some basic rules over here to replace it for go directly to the build function uh, the ad group name i like to use a dynamic field in this case the title of the product and uh, you will see it later in the uh, in google ads as uh, ad group names 
uh, set max CPC. Now I think one cent is a little bit le too less. So let's start with, uh, for example, 35 cents. Save it. And then you can go to your ad templates. You need to always to have a create new ads and post uh, outdated ads. And you can set up an, a new one over here. And basically this is the same what you can do in Google ads, of course. But uh, over here, uh, the cool part is we can use dynamic fields. And that's what uh, this type of advertising make it such uh, specific as the, the, the power of this uh, campaign type. So find a URL that's, of course, the URL of the product. In this case, we use the attribute link for it. The path you can, uh, for example, you can set up the title of the product, but you can also use the category, the main category, for example, and you can go a little bit deeper, but in this case, I think main category is fine. And here's the, here's the ultimate power of this campaign type. You can uh, use all the attributes you want uh, in the in the headlines. So basically, I think for headline one, it's good to use um, the title of the product. Now, you will notice that 44% uh, of the values uh, could be longer than 30 characters. You can um, build the rule on ad group level. So you can um, give a replace if the uh, the title is too long. Uh, we can uh, fill those headlines with all the um, stuff you want. So you, if you run sales, you can set on, uh, okay, you have your sale price over here, and then you can add some static text as well. Now only, and then you, I try to type in euro sign, but it doesn't work, but yeah, you uh, get the point. And now only sale price or just, Basically, if you want to build some scarcity, scarcity then you can um, use your stock level. Uh, now, and you select your stock field, stock in stock, and you can see the how it will be displayed over here. And basically, you can do the same for your descriptions. You can uh, fill those um, headlines and descriptions uh, the way you like. What you can do is you can also set up a uh, backup um, uh, ad. So if you click on this one, you can use only static fields, for example. So you have always one working ad in your ad group uh, for some reason why, if something is um, not working. So basically this is how you build an, um, uh, your ad. If your title is too long and then you go to the, to the rules, and you uh, make a new rule, title, if title length exceeds 30, and then the alternative um, thing you want, then you can say, then take title and replace value, for example, with, then you type your title over here, replace with, um, the thing you like. It's something you have to have in your feed. Otherwise you have to build it manually. Um, but I think this for now is good. Um, if you uh, want to know um, more about this, you can always ask me. But I think for the food example, this is uh, good enough. And then you go to the build step again and I think the warning is uh, away now, so the rule uh, worked. And then we can set up some keywords. I like to start with um, dynamic keywords, of course. I like to use a title for, for this reason. We want to build a specific ads, so only what I do is uh, advertise only exact uh, match type. And you can use also, if you have uh, GTIN codes, I don't know if the feed has GTINs, but you can also use a GTIN as a uh, keyword. You can also use your uh, main category plus your brand, for example. You can build up uh, the keywords dynamically as well. And I think this is a great way to start. If we go back to the overview and we activate the project, 
then we can run it and then we can see if there are some errors the sync state enabled and sync everything so i will save it and run it again and go to the preview mode uh, right click on preview then campaigns and you can see uh, what the builder has built so this is the campaign name the ad group name is on um, title uh, based so in this case you get a warning because of this product doesn't have any title so in your rules you can set up a rule uh, that says if title is empty you remove the product or replace it with another uh, feature uh, you can see which responsive search ad he uh, has built so in this case he utilized the title uh, with uh, now temporary uh, 6 uh, 96, uh, 95 and only 30 left in stock so basically you can uh, modify it with rules because of the number 13 isn't uh, that great to display because of uh, it's not that urgent to, to buy if there are uh, 13 left in stock. You can see uh, which products are working and which not. And uh, you can see the uh, errors, errors what it uh, triggered. So uh, you can fix it's finished right now. And if you go to your Google Ads account and you refresh your account, then you should see the campaign that's over here. And if you click on it, you can see the ad groups uh, you just built and keywords. And uh, basically you can see the ads. So you are ready to uh, run your campaigns right now. The greatest part of this campaign setup is when you have a rule in place that if stock is less than uh, one or zero, the campaign will pause automatically when a product is sold and the stock level drops to zero or to one. You don't have to optimize it uh, yourself. It uh, The whole system does it itself. That's the greatest part. If you have enough data in the campaign, uh, let me say uh, 30 to 50 uh, conversions per month, uh, I will suggest to switch over to an automatic uh, st strategy, conversion uh, maximization with a target ROAS. And if you want to automate that as well, you can choose to set up rules um, to increase or decrease your ROAS based on your performance. And that's uh, a thing I like the most. Um, then your setup is fully automated and you uh, only have to check it I think um, what I do is uh, twice uh, a week, I guess, to see if uh, all the things are working like it should. And uh, you can uh, step in if you, this is my first time and I try to improve uh, on all levels. So if you have feedback, uh, please let me know. If you have questions, please let me know. Have a great one.